Hi guys, today we'll be working on our scent indications. So I'm going to show you how I'm shaping that indication with my dogs and how I'm going to prove that indication so the dog stays um, in that indication even in the face of distraction. So today I'll be working with zombie and hiccup. They're both at very different stages in their training. So we'll start with zombie so you can see the beginning stage and then we're going to move to hiccup where you can see a slightly later stage of the training. So, so with zombie's training I'm just going to start at step one with the indication. So I've got my little um, bit of Kong in my vial here, so a teeny tiny bit of Kong. She already knows how to indicate, so that we're on the uh, small piece. I'm going to pop it underneath my toe to begin with. Yes. So I can just work on her doing a freeze indication. Let me um, put, go sideways so you can see it better. So I can work on the freeze indication uh, at a, a level that she finds easier. So on the floor rather than on the wall to begin with. So I can just drop those treats down right by her nose. When she's indicating, she can't pick up the uh, vial because it's under my toe. Go. So what I want to do is stand there and stare at it. And I want to try and get the water before she gets too frustrated. But I also want to make sure that she is holding it for a little bit longer sometimes as well. So I'm going to put it on like what I call a variable reward schedule, where sometimes I'm going to reward it straight away. And sometimes I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I throw that reward down. Now I'm not actually using markers right now. Sometimes I find markers um, can become a bit of a distraction to your training because then the dog hears the marker and then they move away from the, um, from the indication. So you end up with a dog that kind of goes to the marker and then moves away, it goes to the marker, moves away in expectation of reward. So I want to make sure that reward is landing on the scent. So rather than it coming from my hand, otherwise the dog will be inclined to, to come away every time she thinks that she's uh, looked at it long enough. I want her to stay looking at the scent rather than looking back at me. So that's the first thing to fix if your dog does that. If they look look at the scent, look back at you, look at the scent, look back at you. Fix that first. And we can just do that with some reward placement. And look, if you go over there, you won't be in the way of the camera. Some reward placement and ditching markers if need be. Such. So we give it a cue. Wait for it to indicate. doing? She's like forgotten what we're doing. Zombie. Search. Go on. So get her back on searching. Search. I'm going to add the key now because when I add this, when I move the uh, vial to the wall, um, I want to be able to give her the cue so she knows what we're doing. And initially she's obviously going to see where I'm putting this vial so we're not actually teaching her how to actually find it yet. And all I'm working on is the indication, not the searching. So separate those skills up so you're working on one thing at a time before you then combine them together. Yeah. So now we've got a good, um, fairly good indication on the floor, I'm going to move it to the wall. I'm going to set this, um, I'm going to make sure I've got a hand for the treats. In fact, the vial is still there for the other day, so there we go. So I'm going to put this vial in the wall here, shove it in the, in the gap so she can't pull it out. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So she's seen me put it there, so instantly her nose is going to it, Search. Wait till she finds it. Initially, I'm just going to reward straight away, just while I build up that indication in a new location. So going from floor to wall um, can be quite difficult for some dogs. So I'm just going to build that up. And once she's confident, search. We're going to start just swapping to a variable reward schedule so that sometimes she has to work a little bit harder and maintain that hold a little bit longer and sometimes she gets reward straight away. Zombie! The treat's not over there. Search. Again, I'm not um, giving the treat from my hand, I'm throwing it at... Um, my dog is a I'm not... I'm throwing it at the Kong piece so that it literally bounces out the wall. So she's not waiting for it to come from my hands. So if I bring it down here to give to her, very quickly, if I do these repetitions like this, we're going to be teaching her uh, indicate, come off, indicate, come off. And before you know it, you've got a dog that's coming off too quick. So I'm not going to do that. You see already, straight away, within three repetitions, she started bringing her, her nose off the wall, waiting for the reward. So we don't want that. So very, very quickly, your dog will learn what you actually want them to do. Zombie! Search. See, you already coming off that wall instead. It's gone underneath, you can't get it. Search. Oh. Search. It doesn't help these. <laughs> they 
they're literally pouncing everywhere. And I think they've rolled under the door now. Good girl. Good. Good. So once we've got a pretty good indication the dog's holding it for a few seconds, we can then start doing what we, what we call um, distraction proofing. So I'm going to start with a basic distraction where I'm just going to move my hands while she's um, indicating. So just wiggle your fingers because this is just going to be your dog's peripheral vision. Um, search. And every time they come off the search to look at your fingers, just move your fingers away and then we, we ask them to search again. Zombie. Search. Good. And then each time I do this, um, I will gradually increase the time that she has to stay on the mark four before zombie that's the floor search before I reward and then once she's good with that I can then add a I can make the distractions bigger each time so ready search <laughs> I caught you a bit early then didn't I so I'm gonna just aim to touch her without her coming off um, the scent there we go. ready search Girl, I'm making sure your treat hand isn't a distraction. So you saw then actually put my treat forward to reward before I was ready, um, and she then came off. So make sure you don't preemptively, preemptively, preemptively um, bring that hand out before you're ready. So I'm touch, and then I'm going to reward. Ready? Touch. Touch. So I've got the um, a basic tap in. Now all I do is I'm going to stroke her while she's while she's um, on that scent. And this is going to really help with teaching your dog to focus and stay focused on the task, even when there's distractions about maybe such as other dogs or indeed being touched by somebody. Yeah. Ready, search. And it will also help to build up your duration on that scent as well, because now the dog's obviously holding it longer while you're touching them, they're having to focus a little bit more. Search. Search. Oh. Girl. It's a really good way to build up the duration of your indication too. So that's Zombie's um, first steps with um, distraction proofing. And what I'll do now is I'm going to get Hiccup out. I'm going to show you where we are with Hiccup. Okay, so we're here with Hiccup, and we're going to work on Hiccup's indication as well. Now, Hiccup's on a slightly different scent. He's on his gold level with his UK Super Dog, so we're working on um, truffle oil. Let's put that in there. Um, where was I working? And I'll just shove the scent in the wall here, um, and then we're going to work on his indication. Hiccup. Ready? Search. Wait for him to find it. He's pretty good at finding this now, search. So I'm just going to warm him up, make sure he's doing a good indication. Lost it, hiccup. Search. Hiccup. Boy. But all you can see is hiccup's bottom. There's the way he's searching. Search. I don't know why he's putting his bum around that way. Good boy. Hopefully you can still see what we're doing either way. Hiccup. Ready? Search. Good boy. So once you've got the dog doing a nice indication, I'm going to start the distraction proof in the same way as you did a zombie. Search. So I'm going to start with just wiggling my fingers. Boy, making sure that my treat hand isn't a distraction. I mean, obviously your treat hand, um, you can use your treat hand as a distraction if you want. So I can turn to search and then I could bring the food out and him still stay doing an indication even when you can see the food. So it's actually in some ways worth um, search, doing a bit of distraction proofing with your food. Boy, so dog doesn't see the, the presence of the tree hand equally food is coming and that they can finish what they're doing. Don't lick it, Hiccup. A little there for a reason. I don't think it's very nice we can lick. No, we're not biting it. Search. I don't know why you're biting it, Hiccup. Let me see if I can put it somewhere a little bit um, more concealed so that you can't, can't bite it because I don't think it tastes very nice. So I'll put it down there. There we go. It's in the gap down there. Come here. Ready? Search. And I'm pretty sure all you've got is Hiccup's bottom. So maybe I'll move the camera so you can see what's going on a bit better. So 
I've moved the um, scent to a location where search. You now can't bite it. So it's really important. If your dog is starting to develop bad habits, like biting the vial, um, try and hide it a little bit better so that the dog can't get into the habit. Because with a few repetitions, you can assume that that's what I wanted him to do. And actually, I don't. I want the freeze hold, um, not nibble. So we can stop nibbling just by adjusting how we're presenting the scent. So now that he's searching again now, search. I'm going to add the distraction of food. If he comes away from it, I'm just going to close my hands and reset. Search. Boy, so that, that doesn't become a distraction. Search. Then I can wiggle my fingers. Boy. And then search. If you start touching. Boy, so just a light touch initially. Pick up. Search. Boy. And then increasing the duration of that touch before we make that touch a little bit harder. Boy, and now we're going to start um, stroking him while we're doing that. Search. Boy, search. And it's just teaching him how to um, ignore distractions. Search. I can move my legs and create my own distraction. Search. Search. He's like, what are you doing? Boy, make sure we keep it at the dog's level. So if he gets it wrong, make it a bit easier. And uh, we don't want to keep getting it wrong. Hey, search. Boy, so we can make noises to distract him as well. Search. Boy, search. Good boy. Good boy. So you know, get inventive and really build it up at your dog's pace. Good boy. There you go. Um, so that you're progressing at your dog's rate. Oi. So that's our indication and indication proofing. Post your videos into the Facebook group, into the comments below this video so that uh, we can give you guys some feedback and you can ask questions about it. And maybe show some videos if you're struggling. So if you're really struggling and you try and film the session so we can see where you're struggling, we can make um, suggestions if you're struggling to troubleshoot that yourselves. So go ahead and practice then. Good luck guys.